So today's discussion is the continuation of our past discussion. So today we're going to discuss about rapport, which is also a very important thing in communication management or in managing your network. In the film Groundhog Day, Bill Murray plays a lecherous television presenter in pursuit of his female colleague. Bill is trapped in a time-locked world where he gets to live through the same day again and again. Each day brings an advance in his pursuit of his object of lust as he learns different things about her, her likes and dislikes, turns ons and turn offs until, ultima until ultimately he gets to the point of succeeding in turning around the relationship from enmity to love. So none of us have the opportunity presented by a Groundhog Day. Yet, it is possible to establish some common rapport in our encounters to enable us to engage effectively and achieve common goals with other people. So rapport comes at the times when you seem to instantly hit it off with someone, where there, where there is mutual respect, trust, and sincerity, along with shared experiences and common interests. Just as you can build rapport, it is also possible to lose it by indicating a lack of interest or failing to deliver. So rapport is created through a process. So we are going to discuss each process one by one. First, you go through acknowledgement. In acknowledgement, you can probably recall times when you were introduced to someone and he or she failed verbally or particularly non-verbally to take an interest in you and offer respect. Second, understanding based on initial impressions. Is this person a PLU? When we say PLU, person like us. Or is there some other commonality? Be very wary of forming and making the wrong assessment from initial impressions. We also have acceptance. This is an agreement explicitly or implicitly to continue the dialogue and carry on the relationship. We also have respect. So respect comes with an emerging emotional dimension to the relationship. So this is just more than acknowledgement. And we also have trust. So trust is created when you increase the level of commitment to each other. Each of you feels confident about the other. Each of you feels confident the other will deliver and deal with any concerns openly and in a genuine desire for accord. There is the belief that each will act in the other's best interests. Lastly, we have bonding. So bonding emerges as a sense of real affinity. So whether it is based on professional respect, friendship, love, or support to create a difficult to break relationship. So those are just some of the processes where in rapport is created. So again, you go through acknowledgement, followed by understanding based on initial impressions, and then there's acceptance, respect, trust, and bonding. So if we have all those processes, we also have some tips for creating rapport. So here we have a couple of tips on how a couple of tips to guide you in creating your rapport with um, the other person. First, we have, of course, the first and most important thing is a smile. So smile, although you should be careful of appearing insincere. So the imperative is to create a special smile for each unique person in front of you. We also have make the other person feel special. Okay, second, make the other person feel special. Showing interest in other people is paramount. Respond and engage fully with their dialogue. One of the problems of using formal presentation materials such as PowerPoint is that it tends to force you to stick to your script rather than going with the flow and fully immersing in and nurturing the live dialogue. Third, be interested in the other person. So this is more important than your being interesting to him or her. Even the most evidently successful of people will always be engaged if you show genuine curiosity about them. If you are talking to someone at the top of their fame, ask how he or she got started. Better still, ask him or her for advice. If I want to be as successful as you, what should I be doing now? 
The fourth one, we have match, mirror, and maintain your physical stance with the person you are with. You can establish a physical rapport by harmonizing your position, posture, stance, gestures, language, and even breathing. This should be done with subtlety and inconspicuously. Poor rapport can also be generated by the physical situation. For example, if the other person is behind a large desk and you are not. The tools of rapport are very powerful. If someone's nonverbal messages suggest a negative or ill at its mental state, such as arms tightly folded, carefully adopt the same position. Watch the pose for a brief period, then come out of it, and the other person will often follow suit. Sometimes you will need to break a rapport, such as when you want to finish a phone conversation with, without appearing brusque. The answer is simply to stand up. This move unconsciously communicates itself and acts as a trigger to prompt the other person to conclude the conversation. The matching should also extend to your clothing. Next, we have empathize and establish commonality. Always try to see the world from the other person's viewpoint. Understand what motivates him or her or how his or her perspective is different from yours. Respect his or her right to be different. Lastly, listen and look to spot cues that could identify common interests or views. We feel closer to people who have something in common with us. It makes people feel safe and lessens potential dissonance about the fear of the unknown. People tend to like and associate with those similar to them in what is called homophily. They respond to cues such as people being like-minded and of similar age, education, income, beliefs, politics, religion, physical characteristics, height, and so on. Think back to any negotiation or a meeting where there was conflict initially. How well did you build or create rapport to help the subsequent communication? Think back to recent conversations. How well did the other people create rapport with you?